We've almost completed everything we needed to authenticate the user and secure our application. In this last part of this section, we'll take a look at how to prevent unauthenticated users to access any area of our application without permission. So in the meantime, I'm expecting that you guys had refactored a little bit the login screen so that when I'm typing an invalid email, I'll have this layout. So if I remove my password as well, I'll have a message as well if the color changing. And when I enter a, a correct email, like webbermind.com, it will become green. And the same will happen for password, all right? If you didn't, please take a look at the initial.zip file. As part of this lecture, we're going to make a few changes to our application and we're going to introduce also a few concepts that you'll see soon. The first thing we have to do is to find a way to retrieve the actual Firebase authentication from here, the object itself, and return it to our app.js because this is where we're going to run part of our function. If you think about the previous lectures indeed, we saw something that we can run to prevent a specific route, a specific URL, to be returned in case conditions are not satisfied. And the thing I'm referring to is the resolve function. If you remember inside the resolve block in our routing, we can run a function or we can invoke any type of logic. And if any of the promises inside the resolve block are not fulfilled, the route won't be returned. But there's a little bit more into that and I'll show you exactly what I mean. When a route fails, our router triggers a specific event which is named root change error. And we can use a specific Angular function to catch that event and do our logic based on the result. All right, so let's dig it deeper into that. What we want to do first of all is to add the function inside your, our authentication factory so that we can return a reference to the auth object here at line five to our app.js. And it's very easy. So we'll declare hot factory. We will call it dot off. And this will be again a function, no parameters. And inside this function, we'll just return the off object. And that's all. We can save it. Firebase offers a way to check if a user is authenticated. And there are two different flavors to this type of check. And what I mean is that there's a required off function we can invoke. And that's a function that we need to use when we want to restrict absolutely the access to a route in case the user is not authenticated. And then there's something like wait for off, which we won't cover in this lecture because it's not needed by our application, but it's something that you can use to retrieve the actual authentication state in case you need to inject it into a controller at any time. The first change we can do inside our application JS is to reintroduce the home routing that we removed at the start of this section, if you remember, because we replaced that with the login page. But now we want that the authenticated user will see the home page, while non-authenticated will see the login page. So just copy the, the format for the routing and copy that down here. And this will be again when slash home slash home HTML. Bear with me, I'll show you what happens now. We don't need a controller we can change the login route to be slash login and we can write our resolve block for this specific route. Inside the resolve block, we want to declare our current fourth. And if you remember, this is where we store whatever gets returned by the function we invoked, by the promise when it's fulfilled. So in our current off, we want to inject our off factory as a dependency because we need it. We need a function that is in there then function and inside the function again of factory and we'll open our curly brackets. Then we want to declare an off variable and we will retrieve from the off factory from the new function we just written the actual off reference. So we'll store the Firebase off object inside there. And if we want to see what's inside there, we can log it console.log off. And then we want to return off dot dollar require of and this is a function let's take a look at what i just did i'm invoking in the off factory my off function that will return a reference to the object which is the firebase of reference all right and then at the line 30 we are invoking the require of function in our firebase of 
and the function returns a promise that is resolved if the user is currently authenticated and is rejected if the user is not authenticated, which is exactly what we need. So in case the user is not authenticated, it will never be able to access the home HTML screen, all right? So we can simply take this resolve function and copy it in every route that we want to restrict based on the user authentication. So I copy that wall block and I'll add it in each one of my routes. So it will be here in the add event, we want to restrict it, and also in the event list. We already have a resolve function here, so we can just type comma and copy just this bit, including the square brackets at the end. Okay, so we have a way to check if the user is authenticated. We don't have a way to decide what happens if the user is not. The important thing we have to notice is that we need to do all of these checks on the status of the authentication while the Angular application is still bootstrapping. And if you remember in our config block, which is part of the Angular bootstrap, we have defined our roots. There's another block that we can use and this block is called dot run. So let's start typing dot run here. And I'll tell you a little bit what the dot run does. The dot run is the closest thing you have in AngularJS to a main method. And run blocks are executed after the injector is created and are used to kickstart the AngularJS application. You have to keep in mind that only instances and constants can be injected as a dependency in the run block. So this is exactly what we need. In our run block, we want to inject a few dependencies. And the first one will be our root scope. And if you remember, it's the parent of all the scopes in your Angular application. The reason why we need to inject the root scope is because we want to use a specific Angular function to catch our root change error event that I was mentioning a while ago. Let's open our brackets, square brackets as well. We will be injecting the dollar $root scope. And we want also another dependency. And I'll tell you what this dependency does. And it's the location dependency, the user function. We will inject everything again because that was just the annotation, dollar root scope and dollar location, right? So let's open the brackets. Now, what we want to write is dollar root scope dot dollar on. And this is the function in Angular that lets us catch an event and do something about it. The dependency we need here is dollar root change error. And then we want to declare a function. And this function has four parameters. And the four parameters are event, next, previous, and error. I won't stop on each one of these parm because we need only one of these. And the one we need is actually the error parameter. Inside the error parameter, we'll have the error message return when a root fails to load. And our root will fail to load if the user is non-authenticated. So let's start to log the error. And then we want to check that if this error is a specific type of error, which is hof underscore required, required, we want to log error in of just to make sure that we enter this block. And then we want to write $location.path and redirect the user to the login page. Just a few things about the location service, which is another Angular native service. The location service parses the URL in the browser address bar and is based on the window.location native browser service and makes the URL available to your application. That's all it does. And there are a few methods that are exposed by this service and those are pretty much similar to the ones you have in your window.location. So we are just saying that if there is an error when the root changes and if the error is authentication required, we want to redirect the user straight to the login page. And that's everything we need to change in our app.js. I've just noticed that the autocomplete function in Sublime added the square brackets closed at the very end. We need an I for the location as well. Sorry about that, guys. And then we can close it in between the Cori bracket and the regular bracket, all right? So this is the actual format.
We have specified what we want to happen in case of error, but we also have to specify what we want to happen as soon as the user logs in into the application. We're expecting him to be redirected to the home page, for example. Where do you think that we should do this change? Well, I'll tell you immediately, it will be in our login controller. So let's open the controller. We already have our login function that we defined in the previous lecture. And we also have a function that gets triggered when the user successfully authenticates. We can use another service in Angular to do a full redirect with a page reload because if we use the location path, the whole page won't be reloaded and we might have some weird behavior when the home page loads. Maybe we won't see any data, for example. Let's inject the service in our login controller and the service is $window. And as you can imagine, this service is completely based on the window object in the browser. If you are familiar with JavaScript, you should also know that there's an object called window that exposes some methods that you can use. So after injecting that, we can finally use it in our login function. And after the user authenticates, we want to redirect him or or to the home page. Therefore, we'll type window location href and we'll add this slash at the end. So the user authenticates and gets redirected to the slash root, then the app.js loads the home root because you know when it's slash, it will be returning the home HTML template. Let's save everything. And there's one last thing we want to do before testing our code change. And we need a logout function. And you'll be happy knowing that Firebase is also a way to log out users. Let's write immediately a function in our auth factory to log out our users. And that will be auth factory dot logout equals function. It doesn't take any parameter. And we have to type only one line in this function. And that line is auth dot dollar anoth. This is the Firebase function that will log out the currently authenticated user. It doesn't return a promise, so we can simply invoke it. We don't need a return value out of that. So let's save it. And now in our app.js, we will write a root that the user can access to log out from the application. And that root will redirect the user, or better, it will show the login template to the user after on authenticating it. The reason why we'll do that is because we could do that in a better way, which is to add the login logout button in our header in the application so that it is accessible anywhere in our application. But I don't want to keep you here any longer for this lecture, therefore we we'll go the easy way. So we can add a new root, there will be root provider, we can copy this. Root provider when slash logout. We still want to return our login HTML template. We still want to have the same controller to deal with that. And but we want a resolve root. And inside there, we want to log out. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to, again, inject the auth factory with our function as usual. The function takes auth factory again as a parm. And after injecting the auth factory, we'll call the function auth factory dot logout. And that's it. So we can finally go back to our application and test everything we've done so far. Let's see what happens. When the user opens the application, he gets shown the login screen. So I didn't sign in yet. So let's click on add event. I'm still redirected back to the login page. And if I click on manage events, the same thing happens. Now let's log in our user. So if you remember, it's alexabwebermind.com and the password again is capital U D E. M Y one two three. When I click on login, I'm immediately redirected back to my home page, and that's exactly what we wanted. I can see the add event screen and the manage event screen. So let's say that now I want to log out this user. I'll type slash logout in my browser, and then back to the login page, I can't see anything. So we have logged in our user, we are able to register new users. We're able to log out and we have everything we wanted with AngularJS and Firebase.